organization that sponsors a group called the 18. The 18 is Richmond's only accident recruit support and accident response team. In Richmond, we have a radio show every Monday at 6 p.m. on www.lovebroadcasting.net. Again, we recruit to support people who choose the same sex. And we respond to crisis in the community based on HIV, AIDS, and STDs. So that's what we do. We travel across the country. I've been to places like LA. I've been to places like Detroit. I've been to places like Chicago. I've been to places like New York, Jersey, Philly, Baltimore, DC, Atlanta. Um, you may be talking about this particular message. Um, essentially, um, I'm going to talk about my accident decision and why I chose, why I chose those things like that. First and foremost, um, because of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, um, I got saved, I want to say, about when I was 17. Um, but how many people know that there's a difference of being, from being saved and, uh, and from you actually walking out through salvation? There's a difference. Getting saved is the first part. The second part is you actually walking out your relationship and you actually walking out your salvation with God. So uh, pretty much a lot of us are saved, but not too many people are walking out their salvation. Disciples, discipleship, um, teaching relationships. So I say all that to say, when I was about eight or nine, I got saved, and when I was 27, I decided to think of staying from sex. And I'm going to tell you how I did that. I was in this wonderful relationship, so I go, wonderful relationship. And this one, this was the guy that I thought I was going to marry. It was so awesome, it was so great. Um, but I was giving myself to him instantly and sexually um, outside of God's will. But it was still a great relationship. We went out, we, we had fun, we talked, we could relate about anything. Um, and essentially, um, I decided um, that I was going to stay in sex, and I told him. And essentially, his first response was like, oh my God, it's so dope. Girls are not really doing this. Like, girls are not really not having sex. Okay, great. Great. I decided to stay in sex, and this is great. You agree that this is just going to be the best relationship, right? And then he went on to say, but I can't do it. He was like, this is wonderful for you, and it's great for you, but I can't do it. At that moment, I was devastated. You want to know why? Because I thought a decision that I was going to make for myself was going to be a decision that he had to make because he was with me. That's what I thought. That essentially, my decision and my choice for the body was supposed to be his decision and choice. Why? Because he was with me. So I was upset, I was angry. And what I tell you was, I made the decision with one of my homegirls. One of my homegirls, I usually do this workshop with another young lady, her name is Jamal. Um, and we call ourselves the Aliens. And we made the decision together, and she had a boyfriend, I had a boyfriend. And my boyfriend said, okay. He said he was going to do it. He did that guy. It was my boyfriend who said he couldn't do it. So essentially, I'm mad because we made the agreement together. And we were supposed to walk this out together, we were supposed to keep our relationship. So I thought. So essentially, I went on to walk, the, to walk the decision out after he said, nah, I'm good, I can't do it. I was angry. It was several, it was several days that I was like, okay, I'm, I'm changing my mind. I'm changing my mind. I don't, this was a great relationship. It's okay. I kind of not, not be asking to be with him. Wrong. I was going to compromise yet again another decision that I was making for me. Two things, two things that, I, that I say when I talk about my testimony for accidents specifically is we think that decisions that we make is supposed to be somebody else's decision. And essentially that's okay when we're in a relationship, right? Wrong. You guys have been talking about for you, I will, I'm hearing that essentially it's about your relationship. I'm hearing that it's essentially about God loving us and doing great and wonderful things for us. Um, but what are we going to give up for God? What are you going to give up for God? In relationships, let's talk about it. One of the biggest things I wanted to do, a lot of people ask me, so you're not having sex in relationships. A lot of kids, I, I, I speak to a lot of kids, so you're not having sex in relationships, what are you doing? And you know what I tell them? I'm working on me. This is the first time in a long time, and I'm not 27 anymore. I'm 20. <laughs> and I've been doing this for a minute, and it was the first time, at 27 was the first decision. <laughs> I'm 29, I'm 29. And he decided to abstain from sex. That was the first decision that I, that I made for myself. My whole life, I made decisions compromising in relationships, in friendships. The biggest thing about me was I couldn't say no. I was too nice. You was my own girl and you wanted something. Oh, okay, okay. If I was in a relationship with you and I would stand, I would be strong for about a month, maybe two months. And then after that, I was like, okay. Compromising myself, compromising myself. And then at 27, after I made 
the decision to abstain from sex, in spite of him saying, no, I can't do this, this was the first time I was going to decide to do something for myself. For God. That essentially I was saved. Yes, I was saved. But I decided to give up sex for a better and closer relationship with God. That's what I was willing to give up. Not too many people are willing to give that up. Not too many people are willing to stop doing that to receive a promise that God gave us for being absent. Not too many people are willing to do it. And that's okay. Essentially, that's okay. My hope and our goal, as I'm here representing the 18th, is to let you know, I know most of y'all want to do it. I go, I travel all over the country. So many girls will speak, and I talk, I talk, I share my accident, and five girls, it never fails. Five girls will come to me after this and be like, me too. Me too. Me too. Oh, I got me too. I'm a virgin. Me too. And I'm like, why are you, why are they whispering? Why are they whispering? Because essentially they're among their friends, and nobody knows that they're absent. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. We don't talk, we don't talk about being absent with our own girls. We don't talk about still, you know that I'm still a virgin. Then you might know I'm still a virgin. We don't talk about that. We essentially let our friends talk about sex, we let them talk about drugs, we let them talk about alcohol. But in our group, in our friends, nobody knows that you're an accident. Nobody knows that you're still a virgin. You know why? Because we don't talk about it. So I know that there are girls in here, there are guys in here that don't have sex, are not having sex. But they don't talk about it. I, every place I went, um, in 2009, we did an urban warfare tour. And we did it with, the, we, we had a group of mixed group of boys and girls. And the boys said, it's hard to abstain from sex because when I don't want to have sex with my girl, she thinks that I'm gay. That's what I hear. She thinks that I might be cheating on her. She thinks that I might be in another relationship with another girl. I heard boys say, it's, it's, I heard boys say that sex is, oh, that's easy. I've heard that. And every time I hear my heart breaks, it breaks. Our young people are dying from HIV and AIDS. Just two hours away in Washington, D.C., there's a para epidemic of young people who have HIV and AIDS. I didn't come here to scare you. I didn't come here to scare you. I've come here so we can be real about what's going on with you guys. In 2011, HIV AIDS is still a problem. With all this technology, with all this wrap it up, with all this birth control, and you don't have to have your period for a whole year, teen pregnancy is still a problem. HIV AIDS is still a problem. STDs are still a problem. There are two games that I want to play with you guys before I leave, because I never just come and talk. I like to make the workshops and the things that I do interactive. So I'm going to need a representative, again, it could be the same person or somebody different, from each table to come up here and bring your chair and have a seat. This particular game is called Set Group Intimacy. One person from each table, you have to bring your chair up here. And I'm going to give you a definition, my definition of intimacy. Intimacy for me and for the purpose of this game 
is something personal, private, and personal to you. All of you guys have something special, personal, and private to you. It's things that you don't do with everybody. It's things that you don't, it's things that you essentially do that are special and personal. Not, I don't do this with everybody. I don't share this information with everybody. I don't go this place with everybody. That's what, that's what, so be thinking about that as you go. We're about to play a game. Be thinking about special, personal, and private things about yourself. Things that you do. I'm gonna give you an example. I write, I write a lot. You know how to write texts? Don't write texts at home, but you know how I, I write a lot. Right? How many people you don't write letters anymore? How many people write letters anymore? Not too many people. I do. But essentially, if I write you something, for me, that's something that's special, personal, and private. I don't give everybody. Right. Okay? So that's what I mean. Think about things like that. Personal, private. Because some of y'all write music, nobody doesn't really know. Some of y'all write poetry, nobody doesn't really know. Some of y'all sing, but nobody doesn't really know. Don't write really know. That is essentially something in something personal and private that you don't share with us. That everybody doesn't get. Okay. Alright, yes. Okay, we got our judges. Now this is what I want our judges to do. Each time I say one, the person who's not saying hand, put your hand like that, underneath this. Like this. Yeah, pay attention. Yeah, no, no. Oh. There you go. No, hold your hand up. Hold your hand up. Yeah, no, no, no. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. 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 So this is how it goes. When I count one, right? If you snap the person's hand underneath you, then you need to speak. If the person misses their hand, you don't speak. You get the, you get the, you get the point? Whoever snaps the person's hand, you need to talk about, for your table, for your table, you need to talk about something personal and private and special about you that you do. I'm going to give you an example again. I write. Now I people know that I write. Okay? I like jazz. Now I do know that. You get what I'm saying? Does everybody make sure everybody got it? You got what I'm saying? Okay, so don't be, who don't want to say it? Okay. He gets it, guys. He gets it. Okay, that's the thing. She's going to slap that man. If you want to speak, you'll get the man. Yes, if she wants to speak, she'll slap him. You get what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to say one. Get him I'm going to say one. Get him to slap him. If she slaps your man, you won't speak. If she doesn't get your man, you Okay? Y'all get what I'm saying? That's how the game goes. When I say one, you don't trust what I mean. If she's not to me, you'll see. If you're trying to see because you're trying to win the game, you'll take it Okay? Okay, so that's good. All right, what's your, what's your table? All right, we got one for that table. Okay, let it go. Who's me? 